We're here at Wicket 2012 in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates and I'm very pleased to be joined by Dr. Bob Horton who is consultant for the Department of Broadband Communications and the Digital Environment and previously a regulator for the Australian Telecommunications Authority. Dr. Bob Horton, thank you very much indeed for being with us today. Thank you. Great pleasure to be here. I'd like to start off by talking about the last conference in 1988, 24 years ago, which was called WATSI or W-A-T-T-C, yeah, which uh, was held in Melbourne. And uh, I believe that you were there. And perhaps you could tell us a little bit about what it was like there, what was happening there, and what has changed since then. Yes, thanks very much. Uh, it's, uh, it was quite a period of trepidation that we, we saw we were on the, on the verge of a new era coming in, in terms of uh, regulation being separated out from the uh, from the operator, the monopoly operator. Uh, also, uh, privatisation, corporatisation were on the way, and competition was a, a thing on the horizon. We saw this in Australia. We were developing legislation to prepare for it, uh, and naturally, all our colleagues around the world saw that we needed some uh, uh, refreshed uh, telecommunications regulation to prepare for that. Uh, and uh, it certainly was exciting times, but uh, also, as I said, a great deal of trepidation. We didn't know what we were walking forward into. Uh, but, uh, yeah, now we're, we're here. Uh, that was called the Spirit of Melbourne, by the way. And uh, those of us who uh, still remember that conference, and so certainly me from Melbourne, I'm here with a baton to pass over to Dubai, and we pass it over with great pleasure. And what have been your impressions of uh, the conference so far? At the moment, we're still skirting around uh, on a lot of the important issues, uh, and that normally occurs in international treaty uh, uh, discussions, uh, and in particular, ITU is no, no different from any of that. The first week is uh, laying out the ground uh, and the positions uh, and the separations, polarizations, and then we start to move in a little bit closer and perhaps linking in some of the trade-offs and packages. So that usually is in the second week. Uh, so I, I, I don't feel any sort of concern at this stage uh, that there's a divergence of opinions. People have been working on this for 24 years, so uh, we can't expect too much in the first week. But we are making progress. What are the major issues being looked at here? Well, uh, I'd categorise them probably four or five issues. Uh, of course, the, the internet has received a lot of publicity uh, and uh, we need to isolate what it is that the ITU can do uh, for the internet world. The internet is not telecommunications and telecommunications is not the internet. Uh, the internet uh, is supported by a, a component called telecommunications and that's the platform on which it operates. But uh, in terms of where the ITU has a role in there is what we are exactly here to find out. Uh, and, and uh, convey to the outside world where we have a legitimate uh, 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 contribution to offer and support uh, for, for the internet. A second area is in security, security of services and we've seen the intrusion of uh, unwanted uh, forces uh, into uh, telecommunications. That's a very, very broad subject as well uh, and something where the ITU has a role to play and the plenipotentiary in Guadalajara gave us the, the boundaries of that. Now we need to uh, encapsulate that either in the treaty text or in a, a resolution uh, at this, uh, this conference so that we, it's got some uh, traction within the, within the regulations. Other areas that we need to uh, help with is a definitional uh, sense of uh, operating agencies or recognised operating agencies, just what we call our players in the industry uh, without uh, capturing them into uh, a regulatory net, because some of them are not intended to be, be caught. Defence networks is an example, some private networks. Uh, so we don't want to be overly obtrusive uh, or intrusive with regulatory measures in a market that is developing uh, remarkably uh, uh, with free market forces. Uh, another area is that we recognise too that uh, some uh, countries still require the old set of rules for charging and accounting. Others uh, depend on more, more uh, uh, commercial relationships and, and, and uh, contracts. So that is the trend to, in, in a competitive market. But we need to preserve some of the old with some of the new. Uh, and that's the transition we're in. And that's where this conference finds itself, in a period of transition from the old ways of old administrations negotiating with each other to new ways of where the market forces take over 
uh, in a fair way and we can back off with the regulatory uh, overhang with that. But we need to preserve those two tracks, uh, two, almost like two highways, uh, so that we, we have a set of rules that can still be used if they're needed uh, between uh, monopoly organisations or uh, state-owned enterprises and uh, new commercial agreement packages. And somewhere, uh, some countries will transfer across to the other uh, and there'll be hybrid arrangements as well. That's the difficulty that we have, uh, accommodating both. And that's uh, something we have to uh, find the compromise uh, and offer something for both parties. And I think that's where a lot of the tension is. And what do you see as some of the likely outcomes of this conference? Well, I, I would hope that uh, we can uh, say to the rest of the world, we have a role to play in whatever you do, uh, in the services that you provide, the future competitive uh, service providers. Uh, and. Uh, this is the limits to what we can we can assist with uh, and please don't feel as uh, trying to take over your patch because there's enough work for us to do in, in ensuring the uh, compatibility, the, the connect, connectability of, of services and accessibility. So the ITU is divided into three areas of radio communications, uh, in telecommunications standardization and development sectors and each of those areas has, well, in, in uh, in radio communications, collaboration on a global basis, so we have a, a limited resource to play with. But importantly, in telecommunications, we, we've got cooperation. Uh, cooperation with the platform that we are providing and the, 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 the big, ba basic technical standards that are required to make that operate and function properly. And then in development, uh, here we have the access for developing countries, so uh, they need to be able to know how to use it, to apply it, uh, and to develop their networks so that they can reduce the cost of communications, they can use it to develop uh, jobs, op opportunities uh, for economic growth and for education and social applications uh, within their own countries. So uh, the three areas, uh, the, the, the development sector has very much on its plate uh, to do in that uh, uh, access and uh, what they do with the, what they're presented with as an access solution. And all by the 14th of December? Yes, yes. Before that, we, <laughs> we, we need to agree because we have a day of uh, uh, just drawing this all together in, in a legal form and then signing off on it. So do you feel confident that, it, that all these, these outcomes will be reached then? Uh, I, I feel confident uh, if the will is there, uh, then we will achieve that. We'll achieve most of it. We might not be able to achieve all of it. If not, we can back off to what we already had, uh, but uh, a lot of that is still very useful anyway. Uh, nothing will ever be perfect in life, and uh, there were some imperfections in 1988 when we finished that, but it got us through, it got us through 24 years. So uh, it's a, a Pareto solution usually, because satisfying everybody is impossible, but it's a, it's a consensus that we hope to get to, and I'm sure we will do by the end of next week. Dr. Bob Horton, thank you very much indeed for being with us today. Pleasure, thank you very much.